Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So over the past few days, hasn't been a whole lot of crazy news in the tech or gaming industry, but we do have one bit of juicy information that I wanted to talk to you guys about here today. The details of the Navi24 chip from AMD seems to be coming out, and it seems to be coming out almost on a daily basis. Now, this marks the very first graphics card from either NVIDIA or AMD of their current RDNA 2 and Ampere lineups that should be targeting the mainstream gaming audience. Finally, people that are stuck using APUs right now might actually have a possible option of something to buy. So to me, this is pretty exciting, and I wanted to talk to you guys about that one here today. So we're going to jump right into it. Over here on video cards, we have AMD's entry-level RDNA 2 RX 6500 XT to feature uh, 1024 stream processors and RX 6400 with 768. So that'd be 16 CUs and 14 CUs respectively. Now, this isn't news per se. We all suspected that this is what Navi24 would actually look like. And at the end of the day, this is just basically confirming all of our suspicions. We're going to scroll on down and take a look at the specs that video cards have been able to dig up. And right now we have obviously 1024 and 768. This will have 16 megabytes of infinity cache, which is half of that of the uh, Navi 23 die. So that makes a lot of sense. Basically, this is half. It's cut in half. You know, you have half the shaders, half the uh, infinity cache, half the ray accelerators. It, it's half okay um they're also going with the less expensive 14 gigabit uh gddr6 these are only going to have four gigabytes of gddr6 which is something we're going to talk about because this is both a good and a bad thing so yeah it's not great but these are technically entry-level graphics cards but they're going to be positioned as mainstream which once again we'll talk about that more in a sec 64-bit memory bus. A lot of people are looking at this going, well, 64-bit cards used to be like super cheap, like the GT 1030, which is technically correct. However, with the Infinity Cache, AMD has basically jumped up a tier. This would actually compete more with like last-gen 128-bit stuff. As we've seen, you know, the 256-bit and 128-bit cards are basically punching a tier above their weight if you're going by that. And then you have your memory bandwidth. Now, they have no information about the TDP of the RX 6500 XT, which means that AMD is probably pushing the clocks much higher than they probably wanted to, as this was likely supposed to be a 75-watt card. They probably both were. Um, but the 6400 will be at 75 watts-ish, so if you are using something that requires low profile or small form factor or just using a PC that can't use uh, an external power connector, this will probably be the most powerful GPU on the planet to fit your needs when it launches. Uh, I was really hoping to see the 6500 XT in this class, and maybe somebody will make a cut down version. But for right now, they're not sure where it'll be, but probably more like the 100 to 120 watt range. So this news is kind of important for a few reasons. Number one, in terms of performance, we're probably getting the RX 580 reincarnated yet again. Uh, I guess you could say RX 480 reincarnated yet again, uh, as we've had, what, the 480, the 580, the 5500, and then the 6500 or 6400 will likely hit that performance target. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about here. Just looking at the numbers, we can kind of get a general idea of where these cards are going to perform. Seems everybody's in alignment. The 6500 will either perform like an RX 580 or maybe something like a 1660 Ti or GTX 1070 level graphics card. So a step up, uh, depending on how high they push the TDP and clock speeds, that might be possible. Uh, so you have your high end and low end on that one, and that puts the 6400 in the range of the RX 570 on the low end or an RX 580 on the high end. Now, considering the current market conditions, and obviously these are probably going to be announced at CES, we can kind of get an idea of what the pricing will also be relative to the other cards in the series. Since we have the RX 6600 coming in at $329, these cards are likely going to cost $200 plus for what used to be considered entry level. 64-bit GPUs were the sub $100 graphics card pretty much forever. Not going to be the case this time. Essentially, entry level will now be somewhere's likely around the $200 price point. 
Personally, it kind of depends on the performance that these hit. If it's on the higher end, where you're getting kind of like 1660 Ti level performance out of the 6500, I suspect that that'll be positioned probably around the $240 mark. Now, granted, that's not great, but you're getting similar performance to what you got last gen at a lower price at the expense of VRAM. Now, that would also put the 6400 probably right at that 199 or maybe even 189 so there's a little little gap there between the $200 mark. AMD might want to be like, yeah, it's sub $200. Instead of being $1 short, they'd be like, it's 11 Hey, look at that. It's so much better. Um, that would be my guess if it's on the higher end. But if we're basically looking at RX 570 and RX 580 yet again, I suspect we'd probably see 169 for the RX 6400 and then 199 on the 6500 XT. Now, that means you're technically going to get a worse value out of the 6500 XT compared to the 8 gigabyte 5500 XT of last generation. But we're already seeing worse value products from AMD in terms of the MSRP, which we'll talk about how useful that's going to be anyway, um, comparative to some of their other products in their lineup. The uh, 6600 XT looks silly next to the RX 5700 XT, and the 6600 looks kind of silly when you compare it to the 5700 of last generation, or even more silly compared to the 5600 XT. So AMD's MSRPs here lately have been kind of more in line with where the market really is and where, you know, the inflated prices are coming from. The biggest issue is the four gigabytes of VRAM. Four gigabytes is basically 1080p medium territory or 1080p low, depending on the game. And for a lot of people, that's simply not good enough. And honestly, these cards really aren't targeted for you. As I mentioned before, these are really for people that are right now just using like a 5700 or 5600G or Intel integrated graphics just kind of getting by. Any of these cards are going to be significantly faster than that. And that's pretty much who these are going to be targeted for. Kind of like back in the day, these, what these sub $100 GPUs used to do. You know, that's what your GTX 1050 was for and your uh, 1030, GT 1030s, uh, your RX 560s, 460s, and your RX 5500s. They kind of catered to that market for people that just don't have discrete graphics cards. Like I said, they used to be much cheaper. They're not anymore. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. The upside here is, is the four gigabyte of VRAM, the positive part, isn't going to be that great for Ethereum mining. So a lot of miners are probably going to ignore this. Also, a lot of enthusiasts are also going to ignore this card. And considering it's literally half of what the uh, Navi 23 is, they're going to be very, very small dies. Um, so these are going to be much more plentiful, I would assume, at launch than what we saw with Navi 23. And Navi 23 was available for a few days after launch. And you could get them for about the MSRP or slightly inflated. So, for example, let's say the 6500 XT comes out at $200. It's very likely that you will be able to get it at $250-ish. And yes, it sucks that you're basically going to get an RX 580 or 590 class GPU at $250 with less VRAM here in 2021. But it's a lot better than going on eBay and spending $450 to $500 on an RX 580 8GB. So... You know, give and take here, guys. So I actually think that this might actually be a great launch for AMD. It's going to fulfill a need that's out there in the market. And the more graphics cards that are actually getting into the hands of actual gamers, uh, you know, the less likely people will go, oh, I'll just spend three, four, five hundred dollars extra on the graphics card this time and keep them in price brackets that they actually want to be. So I think that this is going to go over pretty well if supply is good enough. Uh, like I said, the Navi 23 launch gives me hope that AMD understands they need a huge influx at the start. But realistically, after the first week of these things coming out, they will likely be on eBay. They'll be probably around the same prices as the four gig models of the RX 580 and 570. That'd be my guess. Either way, it's about time that one of these companies start flooding the market with very small, easy to produce, cheap to produce graphics cards that will be able to satiate 
like I said, people that are just stuck on iGPUs. This is something that we've needed for a while. Secondhand market hasn't really existed for these folks. And they'll actually have a shot at getting one of these with miners kind of being out of the equation. I'm sure some people will buy them and try them, but honestly, it's going to be kind of a diminishing return for those guys. And then you're going to have the enthusiasts, you know, most of you guys out there that are like, well, I have a video card that's better than this. You're going to just ignore this entirely. So it's for the people that need these most. And like I said, hopefully AMD can really get in there and satiate this market a little bit better. And it'll just make it easier for people to wait this thing out until things kind of stabilize a little bit more here in the not too distant future. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the deal of the day. There are plenty of deals going on with Black Friday being just a few days away. So for all of you guys out there who waited and you kept your wallet in your pocket, you are now being rewarded. If you have an AMD AM4 socket motherboard, 400 or 500 series, cause God forbid that you're allowed to buy CPUs on your 300 series, but regardless, the R7 5800X 8-core 16-thread CPU right now on Amazon for $342. I'm just going to round up. That is over $100 off its original MSRP and actually cheaper than the 5600X's MSRP. So if you guys want to go ahead and get an upgrade and you don't want to spend a ton of money on a GPU, this might be a solid option for you. So I have links for that down in the description below if you want to check that out. And then I also get asked a lot. It's like, hey, Chris, I don't like a lot of the games that are coming out. People, you know, tend to agree with me. Newer AAA games just aren't that great. Uh, so they asked me, it's like, hey, so what should I be playing? And that game is Call of War as Gunslinger. So I have it pulled up over here on GOG. You can get it on Steam or wherever you want. Um, but obviously, I always recommend GOG because you actually own the game. You can download it, install it. You don't need internet, blah, 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 blah. You guys know my spiel on that. But this is a great game. Basically, it's a very stylized type of game. The graphics hold up very well here today, and it runs on almost anything. If you are one of those guys still using an APU, this will actually run. Um, on an RX 580, you can run over 4K60, well over 4K60 on an RX 580. So the game looks good. It plays good. It's an arcade style shooter. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's very lighthearted, but it it's just a good, fun game. It doesn't take that long to play. So if you don't have a lot of time, don't worry about it. It takes probably about three to four hours to get all the way through. But the storytelling is done in a very unique way. And to me, this is probably the best Western game ever made. And yes, that includes better than the Red Dead games. Uh, it's just a lot more fun, in my opinion, if you like this style of game. Well, alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for this video here today. If you liked the video, please smash that like button, please subscribe, please share with friends. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to the Techonomics podcast, links will be down below. Uh, links for the games and deals also down below. Over there, Paul and I, like I said, we stream in the middle of the week, we stream on Saturdays, and you can chat with us and have fun. We just have fun and sitting down, having a chat, talking about all the stuff of the week, all the cool stuff out there. And we love hearing from you guys and getting different opinions and just, chatting man it's just way better than talking to yourself um so we do that every week and yeah that's really all i have for you guys here today i'll catch you guys on the live stream or friday or whatever so have a happy thanksgiving and i'll catch you guys in the next video